All right, well, there I think what, five people watching. Let's give her a quick systems right, well, check and see how we're going to go. Five people watching. Let's give her a quick systems right, well, check and see how we're going to go. Five people watching. Let's give her a quick systems right, well, check and see how we're going to go. Five people watching. Let's give her a quick systems right, well, check and see how we're going. Seems like I'm picking up the stream on some channel. I would fix it, but um. Seems like I'm picking up the stream on some channel. Sounds fun having an echo. I would fix it, but um. Seems like I'm picking up the stream on some channel. Sounds fun having an echo. I would fix it, but um. Seems like I'm picking up the stream on some channel. Sounds fun having an echo. I would fix it, but um. Seems like I'm picking up the stream on some channel. Sounds fun having an echo. I would fix it, but um. Sounds fun having an echo. Right, now, fingers crossed that should be everything. Forgive me for taking my time on this, but I decided that I'd have ever sleep and then get up and actually get all this ready in time. Forgive me for taking my time on this, but I decided that I'd have ever sleep and then get up and actually get all this ready in time. And it sounds like I've got to hold down my... Sounds like I've got to... I keep saying I've got to hold down the mic button, but then I don't, which always helps. That'll be even more if I turn the stream overlay off. And Gregory says, you remember the replacement? I should, I made it. <laughs> yeah, I, I should, it took me about three years to make. So, I'm, I'm glad there's people in the chat liking it. Didn't mind it. Enjoyed making it, so... Man, look at all these birds. Now, anyway, this is against the point. I mean, and all these fish. I guess I was expecting 8 million people to tune in to watch, but we can still have a bit of fun with everyone. <laughs> nah, it's all good. But the uh, little map we're having to play on today, as you can see, it's a long trip over water to get to. A very long trip. This is actually quite ridiculous. All this map not being used. 
Ah, there we are. So we're very much more goofing about. There's the town of Douglas, off the Isle of Man. And here's Millam. Oh, and Barrow. Which actually. Oh no, yeah, I'm thinking Barrow and Furnace. Now. Hello to Nico Gamer. And yes, Anthony, I do have a very strange voice. It's um, a classic nasally Australian accent. I don't mind it, but it's weird. So anyway, if we're now stuck between somewhere between Barrow and the Isle of Man, where does that put us? What possible train-themed uh, location could we be at? Of course, the only answer is the island of Sodor. If I'd really planned this out, we should have been um playing the theme song or something. In fact, we should have been playing some music, because at least it makes a nice alternative to me talking. But either way, the intention is not to go for any sort of railway series or television series accuracy. But, you know, we've got the map laid out in front of us. Should have a bit of fun with it. Um, Anthony asks how I got the map. Through the workshop. It's uh, publicly available. I certainly didn't do any trickery or magic to get this. Might as well have a bit of light music. Give us something to do other than listen to me talk all the time, because I will not be able to carry a stream by myself. I'm actually a bit stuck for where to start with this. The um, original map doesn't have as many towns, so I went, went through and added... A few randomly placed industries and boosted their production so that we could just get something out of them, but... Yeah, chuck the lot of towns in. That's why the, um, usually isolated point of Peel Godward is now going to start looking like a, um... Just Mecha City when we're done with it. Or Mega City, even. Also running the mail mod, just in case. Well, not just in case, but we're going to be having mail trains, so you know. It's a shame we can't do like a railroad tycoon and sign one engine different tasks. Because then, you know, you could at least... Actually, I've just clicked. I've got um, railroad tycoon. We could do a realistic um, railroad with that. Either way, we'll have a bit of funny. So at the moment I'm just going to do a um, 
little money earner. Not that we need any more money in this game to um, start us off, and that's a passenger bus route around the um, eastern point of the island. Um, as you can see there, great Napford Bus Company Australia, as I've been reading the comments. Um, thoughts on coronavirus over here? It's certainly interesting, I'll say half the population is denying it's happening and the other half is quite sensibly reacting to it. Yeah, I'm in the uh, weird position that I am classed as an essential worker, so for me it's sort of life as normal, except I'm not going out after work or on the weekends anymore. Which is why you find me here, and I guess me being in lockdown all the time is always going to produce for... It's going to end up with more content coming out, even if it's this. What do I do that makes me essential? Good question. I would um, <laughs> I'd, I'd leave it at that as a joke, but as I as I have mentioned before, I work in the grain industry. So yeah, I work in the grain industry, and um, that's essentially food production. Uh, we do mainly food stock feed for animals going to the market and oats to be made in the porridge and canola to mainland China, which is basically been the end and then keeping us afloat for a few weeks anyway. So yeah, we've got a, um, we always have a lot on anyway, but we're, we're classed as food supply and we're far enough away from civilization that if there was an outbreak bad enough that everyone got it, we probably wouldn't get anywhere near anyone who's got it. We're also running uh, increased vehicle capacity, so the stagecoaches will hold a heap of people. Not usually what I'd do, but um, we probably will see at a point when we get to like Thomas's Branch Line, or the area formerly known as Thomas's Branch Line. Uh, hello to James Lamont. Thanks for popping in to see a real life train wreck, I guess. And, um, yeah, the idea of doing mixed trains, if we've only got any in Club able to put carriages in, carriages in, goodness me, if we've only got two coaches or so and a mixed train to put people in, 
better off to have a lot of people in that train. So, you know, run extended capacity so we can run shorter trains. They'll look nicer too. I was going to get rid of that, but that's actually that's a good, 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 nice lake in there. Enough of not burning through the money before the game's even started. Yeah, the, um, look through, oh, well. Crops, we, how do we go through a million and a half dollars? Oh, dear. Yeah, that gets expensive. But also, um, you'll notice the earnings are down 50 million dollars. If, if I've put the, um, quality up enough to notice that. Or possibly because I've put the uh, capacity of vehicles up, it costs more now to run them. And so it begins.
thanks for that, James. It's, uh, yeah. Not just nice to hear some overly positive feedback. So as you can see, and as what's sending us broke at the moment, well, myself broke, if we just throw bus lines at the island, we'll create a passenger network before we even put the first railway line in. Then the trains will take off fairly successfully because they're already used to carting people around on the island. Well, not the trains themselves, but the, uh, the passengers are used to having a transport network.
Boy, it's a uh, rush of your fate excitement, isn't it? But uh, to be fair, I never actually um, advertised this as being entertaining. I just said it was a thing that was happening. Which is an important thing with um, advertising. You always have to... Uh, I just recommending tram track. You always have to um, cover your own backside legally. Always got to protect yourself. And if that's... Um, even then, something as simple as saying that uh, you're actually going to provide entertainment. Well, you better be careful about saying that because it's a risky word, entertainment. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> I think I'd get someone certain about uploads sooner or later. Yeah, I will say at this point in my life, you know, YouTube pooping is sadly on the back burner for myself. I'm, I've got to that point where I, I've done it for about seven, eight years, and I'm not saying I'm sick of it. Actually, crops. 2021 will be 10 years of Bioko on and films. And that's not 10 years of me making dumb videos, that's just 10 years of this YouTube channel. I mean, I'd say where did the time go, but I know where it went, and I've got a channel full of nice videos to show for it, so I'm happy with that. But, 10 years. It's a long time to do anything. But either way, yeah, works, um, <laughs> work murders any sort of spare time I had. That and just having hobbies that aren't YouTube pooping anymore. You'll notice all my best stuff, um, Hellfire, I'll say, was one of my favourites. Hellfire came out when I was unemployed. And I did it over a year and a half, that video. No, one year. It's, um, I forget the exact amount of time, but it's like, you know, lengths of like nine minute videos. The first one, the first four minutes, took six months. The second two minutes of part one took two months. The last minute of part one, part two and part three took three weeks. And I had to split it into three parts back then because one, back then you had to get approval from um, YouTube and have a clean channel record to get 15 minute uploads. And two, it was crashing if I was, oh well not crashing but um, soft locking the um, editing software every time I tried to add more to on. The um, replacement part two was an example of a video that took me a while. And then I did all of it in some holiday time I had off work. And if... See, I planned this all out in my head. I was going to say about my uh, video formatting styles have changed. But I just cut midway through the conversation I planned in my head. So, basically, I've got... Um, is it, yeah, two different ways of doing videos, just, you know. One is the ever-traditional, do-it-all-in-the-one software. 
which if any of you, which I doubt anyone from that, those days are watching, saw the early Windows Movie Maker stuff, and I apologise for that. But you would know that, yeah, Windows Movie Maker didn't cut software well. Uh, didn't cut up video well, so it was a terrible piece of software. I had to download a um, pack that allowed me to do mirroring effects and slow motion video. And that was... Oh, look. <laughs> It wasn't tough, you know, it was oh it wasn't slaving away at the coal face. So I did fifty videos. That's so, a um thirty five videos in the space of when I should have been focusing on my year twelve exams. Was it year twelve or year eleven I started? Twenty eleven, yeah. Yeah, I would have just um just finished year twelve. I did a heap of videos as a distraction from school, finished them all off, and then um, started uploading them. And if I'd had any sense, oh man, Angry A4 Pacific, hello to you too. If I'd had any sense with all of that, what I would have done is um, not uploaded any of them. Because that time was in that period. Um, if you go back through on the Biocon and Films Tumblr page, is the first video I ever did, Duck vs. Diesel. Yeah, we. Um, I prefer not to talk about it any more than saying its name. But that was a. Yeah. You do that, and you get the WTL Network swear pack, which, for those of you who don't know, was all of the curse words WTL used in an easy-to-download file where all the names were separated and all the words were separated. And Christ, it um, ruined, they <laughs> ruined YouTube pooping in the Thomas community for a while. There was a period when, because everyone was inspired by a Keeper of Porridge and who became Keeper of Beans and. Now he's just off as Keeper of Pork doing his own thing. And, um, Christ. See, I've lost where I'm going now, but either way, if I had had a choice, yeah. And then the, um, I'll remember where I'm going someday, and then I'll finish this talk. And in the meantime, I'm. Um, Angry A4 asked, do you like MASH? Oh, yeah, um, you can basically pick my interests from the shows that I watch. That was dumb. So I'm functioning on about six hours of sleep over the entire week here. It's been a busy time. Um, you can pick my interests from what turns up in the videos. And, um... Yeah, what, there, I did a MASH intro title one time. I had a real bad habit of just doing full, like, one to three minute titles for videos. That, yeah. Uh, oh, Christ, I even forget the um, one where Jim Cole's Iron Man. Adventure. That has, like, it's a, you take the starting out, it's a, one minute video. I I don't mind nowadays when I get a um, copyright strike on some of my older stuff because it's like um, Broken Breakdown Train. I cut all the crap out of it. I went back, I'd... I'd, um... Well, I didn't use source files. I've got a different computer with all the old videos still on it. But I trimmed bloody a minute and a half of content out of that. Out of... You know, and it's like two minutes dirty now. Ooh, hang on. Two minutes dirty now. Is it deer? Oh, oh my goodness. Look out. Still cool. I was wondering if they ever interacted with roads. I always thought they'd be drawing, um... They'd draw like an invisible fence around them to stop animals doing that, but that's amazing. You, sir, are getting a name. Oh, 
I think that, um, that's a rot. I thought was also asked, do I? A uh, fan of Gary. Oh my goodness. A fan of Jerry Anderson. Yes. I mean, I, I grew up watching him. Um, <laughs> back in the days, and I think mean, some Australians might remember this, you had to wake up at 6 in the morning to watch Thunderbirds. I didn't. We, um, I wouldn't say we're filthy stinking rich, but we had a very nice, uh, Auto save feature. Had a very nice tape wire. And we could uh, tape stuff in the morning. Tape stuff in the morning. You could set the time on the VCR to when you wanted to tape and go with it from there. So, yeah. Either that or mum would get up early and tape it. As, as most mums do and be nice to the kids. Man, this is exciting. But yeah, no, I grew up watching Thunderbirds lift off it. Probably the one show where I've indulged in every piece of media for it. Got the Tracy on a play set and spent many hours uh, Reenacting the show and wishing they had a Firefly model. Oh boy. Gosh, this is exciting. So, yeah, certainly a fun Thunderbirds fan. Uh, watched a bit of Captain Scarlet, as anyone who watched Hellfire will know, because Captain Scarlet turns up in it as one of the characters. And the doom 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 sound effect is heavily used by me. I love that intro music to um, Captain Scarlet. Favourite MASH character? Hawkeye and Klinger. Yeah. Uh, so my favourite MASH characters would be... Um, Probably just most of the characters from MASH, actually. Uh, Post-Season 4, Margaret is a favourite. I like how they actually gave her a decent character arc and made her just, from this day-wide supporter of the US Army into an actual human being with feelings and emotions. That's, that was brilliant. And especially nowadays when you can rock, watch them all in sequence. So, you know, it's not like they did back in the day watching them a year at a time. You can see how they, especially Radar, Radar's backstory keeps changing, but they play with the character and make him just, yeah, I, I like how they um, work with the show, even if I don't like the latent continuity. But favourite characters, gosh. So you've got me started there, this is a favourite one. Um, BJ Honeycutt, Charles Winchester, who is just plays an absolute guy. David Ogden Steers plays an absolute wanker, but it is brilliant. You know, those rare moments when they give him, um, I guess, a humane side to his character are just bloody good. Oh, and we've unlocked the small bloomer. That's good, it'd be even better if we're making money. I might just wind the game speed back a bit so we um, don't get out of the 1850s too soon. Yeah, but um, MASH characters. Because I could go on about this all day, so it's radar. Wait. Three or four. Is it post three or post four? Whenever. It's basically whenever um, they cut the laugh track. I think the show starts to really get into it. But yeah, late season, it's Margaret, BJ Honeycutt, Radar, Charles, and Hawkeye, of course. Yeah. Hawkeye's a favourite. Yeah, a bit of a MASH fan myself. Yeah, Hawkeye's a favourite because um, he sort of goes off in his own little world sometimes. Like, um, there was a Colonel Flag episode I was watching, 
Flag, flag. Yeah, I forget, sorry. And it's this hawk guy just fambles on about Vegas showgirls for the better part of like two minutes. No one else in the room with him, which I think is only Honeycutt and um, Frank at the time anyway, actually takes notice of him. But you know, he's um. It's sort of Alan Alda sort of ran the show, and you know, Hawkeye was the primary character and all that. But gosh, what a good character! You know, he creates his own world of comedy and jokes, and it doesn't matter if anyone else actually laughs at them because he's laughing, and that's all that matters to him. And then we get the Mash movie, and he just breaks like a twig, and it's. Yeah. So yeah, though, MASH is a good show. If you haven't seen MASH, um, yeah, just try getting into it. I do recommend it. And you train boy 55 Hello to you too. Uh, thanks. I always find it weird. It's like, um, I had someone message me on Discord. Yes, I have a Discord. No, I'm not sharing any details about it. But, um, it's that meeting fans thing. Like, I used to watch Angry Welshman Productions when he live streamed in Transport Fever 1. And I'd comment if he, you know, pick a name for an engine or something, and he'd, you know, you call it Great Bear Pacific Lovely Sausage or something to match his, um, fleet of live steam engines. If you don't know, he has a fleet of um, miniature engines in his Facebook group names them all. So there's Earl of Onion Ring, uh, Earl of French Fry. Real funny. But yeah, I'd pop into the chat on that and people would start recognising me and it's like, I'm not really here for... Uh... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't handle the fame at all. Like, someone says a big fan, it's like, oh, thanks, glad you enjoy it. Don't know what else I can say to that, but... No, um, it's... I'm glad that you're enjoying the content I create. Dark DJ, a uh, little bit. I, I guess it all just gets blended to one in my mind, but there was a while then when I was really into, um, train simulators and just... Oh, I still am, but... Yeah. Good group of content makers, I love the, um... British, not Thomas, uh, talking trains world that the, um, every Pommy artist seems to come up with on their own. Big fan of the British Railway series by uh, Simon Martin. Yeah, I like um, I, I like a good story. Yeah, watching them since 2015. Oh, there you go. 2015 was five years ago. And I'm deliberately leaving that hang for a balls of awkwardness, because, yeah. No, that, that's good, um, A4. Thanks for that. I've been making them since 2011, by the way. i got to be a smart aleck or else I just end up mumbling to myself a lot. And we'll zoom in and have a look at some horses because I realised we're playing Transport Fever and I'm just floating around the map and haven't done anything for half an hour. I do love it though, it's a very pretty game. I mean, look, look at that, look at that. That's nice, that's nice. Look at all the workers going off down to mill. To go with skew on the treadle.
Now we can get, like, Brookfield Goods, Wilson Brothers, Harness Maker, who have got a shop next door to Wilson Brothers Harness Maker and Brookfield Goods. But this um, Miller's Hut, today's menu, garden soup, salmon. I feel like this is just a restaurant that is near the transport fee um, Urban Games headquarters. Is that a modern restaurant? You don't ever. Yeah. Ooh. Melon's Hut again. Still, oh my. It, it does look nice. When you, when you look at it, you know, that's a nice little bit. That's a nice one. I imagine in England there's a town called, you know, Stout Womble on the Wold. It sort of looks like this. And they all drink awful tasting tea and stout and sing songs about how good it is to not live there. <coughs> Another YouTube poop of Ringo Starr and George Carlin having an adventure. Um, you never know. Probably not. If I'm going to be honest, probably not. I, I I did enjoy it, though. I bet, um... I'd been sort of challenged to make that video probably five years before that. Because there's always a divide, you know. It's, um... Who's your favourite narrator? It's like, well, why not just have an episode where both of them show up? I mean, I downloaded the heap of uh, Michael and Shuttle's audio books in case I need to have him turn up in season one as well. But he probably won't. That being said, the latest video is a... <laughs> the latest video, which has been in production since before Replacement Part 2, to give you some idea, is a um, Michael and Shuttle's one. It won't be out for a while, though, because I'm... I'm cleaning up some... Um, I cleaned up my room because I've got nothing else to do. And I found a sheet of paper that had a few video ideas written down on it. So. No questions. Um, Angry A4 again. Made my friend watch your Christmas special and he found it really funny and it got him in there, YouTube peeps. Ah, oh, well thanks for that. Um, I, I hate to say, but I find my videos pretty funny too. I think maybe because I forget what I put into them and when I go back and watch, I... <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit of a narcissist. But it's good to know that somebody else finds it funny too. I think you have to make content for yourself and you find people who um share your ideas. So... Uh, for those who've been watching for a bit, we'll go back to where I was... Bloody... When I was hovering over here when we first launched buses. So, the, um... I doubt any of you people at the moment, if you're all fairly new fans, would remember the, um... WTL Network swear pack, but, yeah, that ruined... Thomas CT peeping for a bit. Because the big names then were, like, chemistry guy who was in his 50s then, so... He'd have to be in his 60s now. He was bloody good too. I went through last night and I looked up all the people who had, um... It just... <laughs> all the ones I subscribed to have come and gone over the years. I, I, I um, do <laughs> probably miss Wanted on the telephone most of all. I mean, you can't just walk straight out of the box with, like, seven good videos and then disappear. I mean, he did. And it hurts, but... Or Bang Coaches. Bang keeps coming back from time to time, and I guess he's a... I guess the only reason... I, I say I stick around, but I guess the only reason I do is that, um... 
because I'm on my YouTube every day, so at least my accounts are active. But yeah, back then it was um, Lickety. Christ, there's uh, a lot of Lickety stuff is still up on their alt. If you, yeah. She was a major inspiration and just an absolute, well, I think it's a she anyway. You never know. They were an absolute inspiration and just, yeah. I down, back in the day, I downloaded all their videos. I know this back when I only had um, weak internet connection and used to frequently have to sit off network and just, yeah, sat there, made a few chicken nuggets for lunch with some chips and just, you cook at home in the oven yourself because you're unemployed and just sit there watching Lickety. Yeah, Lickety, uh, Keeper of Porridge, and WTL Network. And I, I started my channel when um, just like started getting into it when WTL had his second takedown. Back when um, Hit Entertainment used to care about what we did with the brand. So yeah, um, his swear pack had dropped and it was sort of, even I picked it up and you put it in the videos and you had a belly laugh that, oh, I made Duck say a rude word. Ugh, dear. You think back about it, I don't mean really, jeez. It was wrong. Yeah, what I should have done with all that is never uploaded those early videos. I should have uploaded like the last five I made. Because I always say if I had a if I could be bothered, I'd um, remake the last five I did, because they were good. Sorry, burped there, and I hope it didn't come through on the mic. I don't know how quick I was getting off the button. Well, I have an idea anyway, but... Yeah. Make a conversation point out of it. And the railway lines are pick, um, bus lines are picking up some money, so we might start getting into that. Rob, so I keep forgetting where I'm. I ramble off on a point, and then forget where I get up to. Um, but yeah, so I started way back then when WTL had just sort of left for the first time. And from what I pieced together from comments at the time that I found when I googled myself, because yes I do, if you post about me online I will probably find it, if I'm bored on a Saturday night or something. I probably wasn't seen as the um, guy heralding in any great sort of change to the scene anyway. When you consider that um, WTL, Keeper of Porridge and... Um, Lickety all left at the same time and just sort of occasionally dripped and dropped back. And the alternative was me and Bang Coaches and Telstar. I feel like Telstar probably carried the scene for a bit more than anything else. At least until I warmed up and no, Bang Coaches has always just been, you know, he's, he's good. Isn't high art, but then, you know, we're not making high art. Big fan of the film, though. As, um, preference by Interbank Coaches and these, the follow up he did several years later, Interbank Coaches and Tel. So, Interbiocron on Films and Telstar, where he just carried on about us making a video together. <laughs> because there was a lot of just. Needless um, self heaping out needless amounts of praise. Anyway, as it stands, well, I'm um, not even put a railway line in. 
I think it's some in... Um... Ah, oh, my... My push to talk is also lifting the station out of the ground. Whee! Just uh, wait for that on a wet day. But yeah, let's say a group of our wealthy investors land at Kirk Rainan and say, you know, it's a perfect place for a. Actually, the water's navigatable. Oh, they are. That's it, right. Kirk Rainan's is a perfect place for a railway line. Well, I like how it um, put in that little side street by itself. That looks nice. And then we probably better start thinking about actually hooking up some of these services. I've got it set up so the um, uh, implied docks at Bendham for now. So you take the oil away and if the refinery's up at Vickers Town. So you could probably do that all by boat. So the up and back trip, up and back trip, um, cover all the run so you make double the amount of money. Maybe in another stream we'll see how we go. We um, take it to or through one of my completed, well, mostly completed worlds, and it's just an absolute mess of railway lines to try and get all of these uh, goods and services around the joint.
And if I was thinking, I would have changed the app. This is a mod where you can change the color of the uh, platform trims. I guess the color of this line will be green. It'd be <laughs> I was, yeah. You come up with all these grand ideas in your head for stuff, but I don't suppose it matters for a little stream, does it? I should ask you then, Mr. Lin Mr. or Mrs. Linders. I don't know why I'd put a title on there. Should ask you, Linders. Um, what did what did you imagine my voice would sound like? Yeah, you know what, that that's alright. They're they're a tough breed at Calstorp Road. They can climb up the side of mountains. Now the fun part. As you can see I've got every single engine mod and British Mark III carriages for some reason. So I guess speaking with a more refined British accent. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I hope that's a decent accent. I, yeah, probably not. You never know. Oh, well, there you go. I probably should have just um, maintained the illusion. Although I guess, yeah, the um, videos I get are uh, loaded a bit with British pop culture references, really, aren't they? I don't know about um, putting this video up on the channel. The uh, stream might stay up, but yeah. I guess it counts as content, doesn't it? I'm pretty bad at making that. But really, not much has happened. I've sort of, for those who've been here watching from the start, which are I know, uh, hopefully my view count's broken, otherwise it says a lot about the people not watching. Mine says zero, by the way, so I don't actually know if anyone's watching this or not. You could all just be having the chat open in a different window and just popping in and asking me questions and letting me ramble onwards. Which is fine by me. Trust me, I, if I, you know, I'll talk to myself all day. That's alright. 
I wasn't going to do anything anyway, so. But, uh, yeah, nah, this one won't be staying up on the channel anyway. It's not exactly drilling content. And that being said, probably for the duration of this quarantine and all that, as long as you people don't have anything to do, I'll just keep putting out stuff. Might do something more fun. Remember if I've got the right name on it. Are you Macklin? Hang on. Either way, if you um, remember the Soda Island Forums extended railway series version 2, that name may make a lot of sense. Actually, no, it was an electric engine on the Peel Godred line. Um, yeah, it didn't seem right. There, yeah, Glenn seems a nicer name for him. Look at him And to make sure we keep patronage up, make sure we keep patronage up. We'll be uh, getting rid of the Kirkround and bus service as well. Now they've got to ride the train.
Yeah, I didn't realise, but the increased capacity mod has made everything inherently more expensive. Probably don't even need a secondary. Because I like to do the bus services a leap one way and a leap the other way, but I don't think Ralph's castle's big enough yet. I mean, late game this would be um, <laughs> increased capacity be a good map to run on, because, you know, late game in this always ends up with a lot of vehicles and not a lot of lines to make. Oh, here comes the um, nice long wait to see if we actually earn money. Or we could put a headquarters down and cost ourselves even more money. Hmm. Actually, I'm just having a look, yeah. I guess if you want to make money, you'd be a fool not to go for the uh, Napford fuel delivery system. Let's see, for Farquhar, Ultra, Ells Beach, Tidmouth, Dryo, Crosby, and Napford. And um, I was pointing at the screen in my hand, so sorry. But they all want fuel. I mean, so it's Saturday and. Charlotte, Bill Goddard, Renius, Glenock, uh, Ralph Castle, Kirk Ronan, Norrenby, Millam. Does Douglas want it? No, they want bricks. If it wasn't for this gap of water, that would be a fairly easy run. But, um, yeah, we're just making money. As isn't really a known thing, but unless you're Japan, most governments are subsidising their railways to keep them going. Passenger trains really don't make that much money, despite what um most popular culture would have you believe, I guess. Freight is always a big industry. 
So we'll put a docks in a Vigors town. And go from there. I mean, we've also got the mail sorting centers. They're not as affected by the mods, so I've got two. I mean, the potential is there just to run all the fuel lines and then at the same time run mail to Crosby. So just have like a fleet of 20 trucks constantly jumping up and down. That's brilliant. Right. So that should settle it. Next lot is the uh, boat company. Brendan Docks. Yeah, we'll work out some. Might have a little shuttle track or something. See how that goes. Gotta say, compared to the first two versions of this game, I do love the um, landscaping tools and everything, and just the general graph like and I know, I'll show you. What that? That's great. I've got a connection with the building. Hooray! So I don't have to run around dropping roads down everywhere. And I hope they have good brakes on their carriages for anyone who lives between Tidmouth and Haltrack. Because if not, you'll probably get killed. And they didn't see it, but the road sloped down to the sea. in before game crashes. Okay, my um, stream window and my game window are showing me two different things.
Right, that was strange. Either way, we've learned if we want to do a um, Barrow to Douglas Superhighway through the sky, it's going to cost us a better part of $100 billion. And rightfully so. Now, I don't think Vickers Town actually has a harbour in any of the series, but at the same time, I'm not running a train yet. I'm not yet running a train to take oil from Vickers Town to, um, where's the nearest harbour? I suppose it's really Bendham, you know. This isn't, you know, the extended railway series where we can just run whatever trains we want anyway. Keep making all these references to stuff that no one's ever seen. Also, something tells me Troy won't actually be getting an airfield.
John Jinan Chun. Any oh how we better actually set up a um, mine first. All these fuel trucks. See if this works. Lovely, lovely, lovely. This may be a short series as we're going to go irreversibly into debt very soon. With him, yeah. So much for nothing exciting happening, we're about to see a horse get eaten by me. Or not. Oh my goodness. You see I'm for the fox. Holy, there's a lot of bears on soda. Look at that. How's that for nature? That's a steam, sh steam screenshot right there. I'll tell you what, you go you go watch any other channel and I doubt you'll find this level of bear content. Gosh, he's a weird looking bugger. But it also takes my mind off the, um... Well... Ooh, micro stutter. It takes your mind off either A, the state of the world, or B, the ill. That's beautiful. Well, that's, uh, you know, I wish I had a high end computer, though. I used to have a high end computer, but I've worn it down now. That looks lovely. I'll just look outside, actually. You want to look at clouds, you look outside. It takes your mind off the state of the world and the fact that the, um,. The uh, railway's gonna go broke in one stream. We're running it into the ground. Um, so it chroma keys. See, I was trying to come, come up with a, um... Something to cover the screen for a brief moment. That'll do.
Don't worry, I'm just doing some meta referencing. Favorite place in the world, the um, TTTE wiki. is a Wikipedia style page for a truck that shows up once. Done. You know, Peter Edwards just drew that in and that's the thing. Right, now that was the longest possible payoff. That's it. He is now D7101. That's a um, bit of a railway series reference. In fact, it is a railway series reference. So we're going to let him wander off. Actually, if we're going to be doing that, Just in case they never end up in game. There you go. Hello, not oh, birds. Lovely. And in that time, we have gone irreconcilably into debt. And Bendham Docks has produced a thousand oil. I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll make the money back. Seventy minutes. Oh my! It, at least not like the old days in um, trains in our uh, train fever. If your train trip took any amount of time, uh, passengers would die on the trip. So you'd start off with a full train. Because uh, they were tied to their houses, and the houses got bulldozed every four minutes. So you'd have a full train, and then it would be down to like, you'd lose three or four people a trip. At least now we don't have to have that absolute rot of um, time limits anymore, but that is a very long trip. And I think over time we'll um, eventually, sort of each town will get a point where it's just picking up mail. That's the only work though, I've got to put the big track stop in.
Dumb on me, I'm just looking at stuff. So you run the fuel from Brindam to Netford yeah. and spread it out to all these communities. I had this, um, Wonderful idea in my head that it was all going to work out. And he's going the other side around the arm. It's a shame. It's um, I guess it's not a really a map to make money on. Well, that might be, um, we might accidentally introduce no cost mod. Yeah, for every. <laughs> Probably uh, cut the stream in about 20 minutes, and next time we'll come back, we'll have no cost mod. It might be a week or so, you know. I feel like two hours of this a week is enough for anyone. Might even try streaming a game unless something interesting happens. You know, I've got this great idea for late game when we start getting into engines that are featured in the franchise. But for the moment, it's a bit of a grind. So we might just go on. Because I'm trying to treat this like an actual blinking hallway and it's. Yeah. We'll bung no cost, so we'll have a bit of fun with it. <laughs> I mean, really, that's um, Soda Island in a nutshell, isn't it? Soda Island is just no cost. It's like, you know, we've, um, well, the, um, Extended Railway series, and I keep mentioning it, but it's a beautiful um, little series on the Soda Island forms. Has Soda Rod fully becomes a preservation maker, and they keep restoring engines so that allows for a wide cast of characters. Their aim is there are 80 engines on the Northwestern Railway, and we only ever meet 50. Uh, no, we only ever meet like 20 of them. So they introduce all the other characters. But like the TV series, you know. <laughs> they they are making sure that we have 80 engines. And it's like, you know, I've just bought this experimental Zeppelin rail plane. Oh, that's great to so chop them out. That's brilliant. How do you afford that? No cost mod. Okay, so what we'll do is save that there. Like, we'll go somewhere else for a bit. Oh, um, last 10 minutes or so, we'll pop back in and just, uh,
blow it up. But yeah. Just watching. I'm freaking out that stream. I'll just check up the video overlay. So you can stare at Thomas. Man, these keypad things are hard to remember. There we go. That's what you want to look at. I'll pop over, I'll show you a completed sort of. A completed motorbike riding past my back yard. Ah, uh, the, uh, perils of living in an area that's rapidly, rapidly becoming suburbanized. Yeah, have you... Have a quick... What's he doing? Sorry, I'm distracted. There's a kid down there yarding around on a motorbike. Hope he stacks it. I'm a grumpy old neighbor at this point. Actually, I don't know why I booted this up, but we'll have a look through a world I've done. Because, frankly, we need to see something interesting happening. Then we'll scoot back in, turn on no-cost mod, and just spend like 10 minutes getting this system running. And that might be it then. Nice to see a lot of you turn up for the, um, well, I suppose nowadays with our restrictions on public meetings, five people is a lot, but it's nice to see people turned up for a watch. But um, this is sort of my in-progress completed world. I mean, everything's always in progress. I got to the point where it was mass electrification or just leave it. So I left it. So anything goes mod work. Anything? Uh, no. It barely runs any mods this one, actually, because it was all base. This is just the first map I played with. The Intune Tramway Network that soon became a super railway. I, yeah, I couldn't get um mods for it. What? No, I've got Kachenevi there. Have I? No, it's just broken. Yeah, couldn't get mods to um couldn't get achievements to work because it classed all vehicles as mods, as you know. Bit of everything. And um, yeah, when I finally turned the I got the mods as achievement mod. <laughs> oh, that's a convoluted statement, but I activated it and unlocked about 20 achievements for this map. There's some excitement. The um, Hydrobag oil delivery train is going to get, hopefully, micro stuffed to hell. Yeah, the, uh, the passenger service is now kicked up. But this is a large map where ev just about every industry is in use, except uh, the goods factory on the island there. No, and the quarry there. And it's not even that well developed, but yeah. The uh, 135k passenger service. Island full of steam trams. 
Don't mind champs. I like a good champ. I, I think you got to uh, massive railway network. Oh my goodness. I forgot I had that little diesel. Little diesel rail motor that I couldn't bear to sell, so I just bolted a spare uh, electric engine in the front. I mean, also to the point in this map where I have spare engines sitting in depots waiting. Oh, not many at the moment. Oh, I must have been a clean up. Yeah, this is a good map. Is this... Especially Andy. If you like watching tra trains, well, uh, probably a good spot to do it. In fact, what I'll say, um, bagger it. I won't go back into the Sador map, we'll just uh, call it here for now. I mean, look at that spaghetti. And I, I woke up in the middle of the night one time and just dreamed up how to fix all this up. But it's a mess. The um, passenger line is on the wrong side, basically, to what the goods line should be. And I can't really correct it. So there's just lines everywhere. Big steel mill run. Still got steam on this line. Delivering grain, that's why. Delivering grain, my hobby and my job. The um, like I could just spend the stream showing you my little railway here. I'm quite proud of it. The Shantel Electric Service. Which is essentially a museum line of old electric trains. It's quite nice. Yeah, over over the course in game, I've moved stations all around the place, and now I've just a large and still poorly thought out um railway junction. But there. That's what it looks like if you put a bit of effort in. See, so yeah, well, um, go for another scoop man and have a bit of a look, but that's probably in the quality. Next time we'll just um, we'll get a mirage. So I'm, I'm just like looking at this map. There's a lot happening. A lot of work to get it to fly this smoothly. And this isn't really flying smoothly at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, um... Oh yeah, I put a little halt, halt here so the, um... Bench line passenger service down at the steel tan at Baku. Didn't actually have to... Loop line its way around. Yeah, I like, I like this map. There's just... And there's always something to fix, because I've got to go back and fix my previous mistakes. Look at that challenge. I could spend a, a year just fixing this up. And I probably will someday. If I'm that bored. There, yeah, lovely little setup.
And like most services, is around my museum. Canonically, the there's two brand new steamers that have been stored. Well, you know, quotation marks stored. But it's still use the old spur line. You got the line weaves around the mountain. The line weaves around the mountains here, and it's the old station. So you know, it's a museum now, of course. And one of every train that used to run on this section is preserved there. Then there's a new alignment, to just runs diesels and high-speed steam service. Just, you know, you got it. That's flying it right, actually. Good to see it working. service. The oil wells are the worst, that's sort of what I was referring to about having just stuff everywhere. And then there's a little historic tramway that's got a few engines sitting in storage. So they share traffic with the grain trains. Ah, and hello to Joe B, a, um, someone I forgot to mention when I was listing good YouTube poopers before. Yeah, so, <laughs> for those of you who have just tuned in, we are doing an Island of Sador map. But, it got a bit boring, so I'm just showing off one of my um, long play maps. Like this little fella. Once the autosave is done, we're a standardised class of engine and carriage combination on the entire network that I phased out. I mean, I've put like three... I played this for like three days. Yeah. Solid. Actually, more than three days. I'll put probably about three weeks into this. So, you know, I know all these little lines and all the engines and... Everything's got a story. I mean, as you can tell by my video, it's not like a good story. Or even a bad story. But a story's a story. As long as there's a tale to be told and it goes somewhere. Yeah, liberal use of the old track mod for, um... ...disused crossings. And... Well, you guys just see a lot of track, but I know where it all used to run and everything, and I like it. I like it a lot. It's some filthy, dirty old American electric stuff. Yeah, so it's a particularly nice run. 102. There's the headquarters. Forged in blood with the antique tramway network. Oh, slightly modern tramway network. The filthy, uh, <laughs> filthy railway museum. The emissions certainly doesn't like it. They do not like having a steam based railway museum. That I might add has frequent traffic. Well, he's not even carrying anything. And I can tell you for a fact that train hasn't carried anything. How old is it? 72 years. 
It hasn't carried anything for 50 years. That's been extinguished. That was the original one. That cheery little fella used to run the Shantau Tramway, which is this little tramway over here that runs timbers to a um, machine factory. And it's now stocked with old electric bangers. Well, you know, they are not having fun. Ooh, eight people. This was the brief American period of climate. They just bought a heap of American stock. The thing is, so it's um, there is a high-speed service with three engines. They can do like 120 kilometers an hour, and the old bangers that only do 75 max are still cutting people because they offer. Four minute turnaround. There were three minutes. Yeah, I don't get that. I mean, that's an oil train. Yeah. <laughs> and there are people there waiting to hop on the oil train. Why? Oh, they're waiting for the passenger train, but you know. At least. <laughs> A dumb little tourist railway that I set up for just something to do with all the old engines that I kept and. Yeah, they're carting people. Let's go to 11. 5. Nah, it's zero. So yeah, couple of, um, couple of trains down on one. They don't have to look bad. And the last mecca of steam on the main line, the oil valve. Another bunch of absolutely filthy looking engines. Carton oil. Which looks quite nice. Even if it is murder on the frame rate. But yeah, that's sort of how you do a big map if you're willing to invest the time. And I'm not even doing what some people are seeing detailing it. I don't know about detailing the solo map. We might get around to it. But yeah, as you see, that's um four billion. Let's leave that successful of a map. To a point where I even cut the I turned the peninsula into an island so I could put in a dock. Thinking about it, I should have put it over here. Yeah, it's an impressive transfer hub. Look at all those lines. All just jumbled together. <laughs> um, uh, this is what if anyone who actually remembers I was saying before about the increased capacity mod we're running on the Sodor map. This is a mess. Yeah, to run the trains that we need to run. It takes up way too much room. But then at the same time, you know. It looks nice having long trains. But then if we remove the costs, we won't have to worry about it. I'll just put as many carriages I want. So we'll do that. But that's a um, that's the next time job. We'll uh, pick something nice to end on. Because it's been a bit. This has been two hours, and we're not exactly we haven't exactly gotten anywhere. But hopefully, those of you who've been popping in and out have enjoyed a bit of a bit of a chat. You know, for a first time, it's, it hasn't been too bad and. I'm not going to say it'll become a regular thing, probably just while there's a lot of you sitting around doing nothing. If you need a uh, distraction for a few hours, there's an old bugger handles on. 
well, late twenties bugger rambles on about his mildly successful YouTube career. If you count this is mildly successful, then then I'm sure yeah we'll sort something out. I'll have to do a couple more anyway because I've got to look at that beautiful jungle railways. That's amazing. we got a bit to do on the Sador map, and I've planned it all out, so we're actually going to do it too. Because, you know, got all the mods, got all the engines. We'll park here for a bit. Watch the train sit by double speed. You know, sort of it all out. We're going to have a bit of fun. You got it. Ooh, well that looks nice. But, as it stands, we've got the ground work down. And I can always, uh, say the same stuff as at this stream, next stream. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. Small start, but it's been fun. Good having people that's popping in, dropping a line. So thanks for that. So yeah, I've been uh, I've been Bioko on films, and for a lot of you, it's been finding out my um, not true identity, but I guess real voice, which has been shocking to say the least. Oh, a 104-year-old oil train. Oh, the wagons are 104 years old. The engine's like 50. So, I keep going to finish it, but then I'm like, oh, no, nah, hang on. Nah. See, I've been by on the Films. So, um, this has been the Transport Fever 2 live stream, so stay safe. And uh, don't look into the sun. Uh, no, Joe, I will say, this time round, um, all of my Transport Fever 2 stuff comes from the Steam Workshop. I, rem I remember back um, the West Country mod for Transport f uh, for Train Fever. Gosh, that was horrendous. It looked good, but it had such a high smoke volume that you couldn't actually use it. But yeah, the... Um, that's alright. There's a few nice mods kicking around, I'll say that much. But I, what, what I should have said is, is this... Yeah. On the Train Fever website, there's still a few good mods. I'll say that. But... Unless you want some really obscure German stuff, best bet is just to check out Transport Fever 2 mods on our Steam. Hasn't got the engine list that one had, and probably won't because there was just a lot of engines for number one. But still, not too bad. Yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. In any case, for all said and done. Actually, I'll just say it. Anyone watching got any more questions? Is it... <laughs> Might as well open up the floor. Any questions? I'll give you two minutes and then I'm um, actually going to stop the stream.
S thirty is a bloody steep hill. Brings um used to being the uh, oil trains down to a fair crew. Actually, Joe, you know what I should have said? All of the um, content in this map is standard game. This is all the ration mods that got turned into official content. Don't know why I didn't think of saying that, but I have now. Anyway, for all intents and purposes. No more questions and all good. Uh, next week, probably just do this again. Probably start a um, oh, half hour later or so. Just because I don't like waking up at half past eight on the, my weekends. We'll see. I'll put out a video when the next stream's coming up. We might as well make this a thing as long as we're all sitting at home on the weekends not doing much. If it's alright by you guys. And if not, I'll just run the stream and sit here not doing much. Ah, uh, thanks for that, Joe. Yeah, it's good to see you around still, too. I, I, I know what you, Well, I guess we shared the same situation. I mean, I'm not in school. I've got a job, but, you know. Not as much time as there was a few years back to do videos. Gosh, it's a lot of logs. So anyway, we'll do the... Uh... There we go. What I might do for next time is actually cue some music up. But, um, yeah, that'll be, uh, all she wrote for this stream. Good to, uh, see a nice turnout. It was just nice having people popping in to have a chat. And, yeah, I'm not exactly any great streamer or anything, but still, thanks. It's been fun. So next time we'll be, uh, Hanging back into the Sodor map, turning costs off so we can actually have some fun, and just going absolutely ballistic with a amazing road and railway network to rival anything um, to be big. I'd say rival anything we've ever seen, but there are some people who play this game that are just absolutely crazy. So either way, anyway. And all that, I've been Bioko on Films. Thanks for sitting and listening to me for today. Goodness knows why you would, but what else are we going to do? So peace out, peace off, don't look into the sun. Uh, someone always loves you. Yeah. And enjoy yourself. Please stay safe in these troubling times. Stay out of trouble, keep your nose clean. And I always carry a spare hanky or oh, pack of tissues. So yeah, I've been Bioko on Films, and you've been my audience. <laughs>